on Monday, everything had been packed up, everything had been put into my car, everything had been taken care of, and all I had was the task of heading home. This doesn't sound like a big deal, but the Snoqualmie Pass had actually closed the night before, and I had to guess the exact moment when it would be open and when it would be fairly clear. And I, I, I guessed it was a little mid-afternoon, so one or two o'clock. So I, I went out and I drove, and I was really shocked at how good the traffic was. Um, the year before in June, traffic was so horrendous, I had to use alternative routes to get to the Tacoma Convention Center. And, you know, it was just such a headache. I literally spent hours upon hours just in traffic. A simple 20-30 minute drive took an hour and a half. To give you an idea. Uh, but I, I drove and I found uh, where I was going. And it was, it was pretty simple. And I saw the exit. And as I, or I saw the exit to uh, the arcade I really like. And I was just like, oh, I'm not going to go in. I'm not going to go in. And I found myself turning. <laughs> uh, the, the morning before, or that morning... I got a text from my buddy, and he's like, oh, are, you, are you going or not? I'm about to leave. And I thought he was about to leave to work. He was about to leave work. There, There's a difference. So as I was packing, he came in. I'm like, "What are? I, I thought you left. And he's like, yeah. Uh, so there was a bit of confusion there. But yeah, I, I said goodbye to him multiple times, said goodbye to Paco multiple times. Paco actually insisted to follow me to my car, and then back. And so I took the uh, the day as relaxed as I could. And, oh, it, it seems that McDonald's now has a delivery service. I'm going to check to see if that's in uh, Chini. Because, you know, I've got a car. I could do this. If you do, like, five or six things in a row... In an hour, you, you've basically made a uh, Seattle minimum wage, so that's not bad. And, you know, it'll it'll pay for gas. So you do that for three hours, and yeah, you know, some extra money there. Uh, and, you know, uh, McDonald's is very, very different. They're like, well, okay, retail is dying. We're going to become a delivery service, and they're making everything for a delivery-type system. And that, that's pretty cool. And so I went to the arcade, and this really is one of my all-time favorite arcades. And something about this game right here, uh, Magician Dead, Magician's Dead, it's basically a, a Magician's Deathmatch game. And it's a lot of fun, and I, I talked about it earlier in uh, one of the, the lectures. But here it is, and, you know, it, the cool thing is, if you want to do an attack... You kind of maneuver your hands and you have to know the proper maneuver and I oftentimes didn't or I'd screw up and I, I ended up dying a lot and yes that is a, uh, a controller from the Nintendo Wii that controls the person but you don't control the camera as easily which is uh, kind of frustrating for games like this because you kind of want to control quickly. You know, fire the shot here, fire that shot there, fire that shot there. But instead it makes you uh, emphasize each character. And that, that that's very annoying. But I, I loved this game because it's just got so much originality. But I need to learn it to play it a lot better. And this is the uh, prize area. I thought I'd take a picture with my new camera and... That is gorgeous, don't you think? I don't think this would have shown up in my previous cameras. So I was really, really impressed. And I just recognized wheels on these machines so that everything can get wheeled around. Everything had moved, by the way. Uh, here we go. And those were the stairs you used to get on. I put in about 10 bucks to play games. And this is, this is uh, the Nessica area where you kind of uh, sit down type games. This is a uh, magician fighting game type thing. And they have these, the sit down games, sort of a modern candy cab really. And I love them, I, I adore them. 
And you'll notice that some games have multiple games in them. Those are the Nessica games. And I totally want a Nessica. They probably cost several thousand dollars now, so I have to be careful of what I say. But you can see just the glorious beauty that is the Japanese game arcade, modern arcade uh, setup. And they've got everything ready for you. They've got all the buttons ready for you. They've got a, a, a standard JAMA setup. And, you know, those little flashing lights are for your card. Uh, and, yeah, Metal Slug 5. It looks gorgeous in this picture, too. And then Street Fighter, I believe that's 4. And, you know, you just kind of have all this stuff. They moved all this over to this corner because the, the games weren't being noticed as much. And this, or in this corner, weren't being noticed as much. So... They maneuvered all the, the Japanese fighting games here so then people could play and they would totally remember where it was. And this is a Magician's Dead video. I had just lost. And it's a very stylized type game. So you watch a, a death match and I suddenly realize, oh hey, I can play again. So I should I should uh, get back to it. <laughs> And this game right here is actually really fun, but the story gets in the way. We have Mario Kart. We have, uh, I forget what that game is. And we have Sonic and Mario at the Olympics. So just a ton of awesome games. Anyway, this game right here is one of those sharpshooter type games. And it is an absolute blast. They put in a lot of extra stuff. For instance, uh, the top has these fans. So whenever your character is moving, you you feel the fans hit your face. And you, there are moments where you have to maneuver away and look at the screen, and then you have to look into the scope, and you have kind of a zoom button, and you just got to maneuver quickly. But I, I've got to admit to you that the story just gets in the way, and it kind of drags on a bit. So I was like, no, I, I just want to shoot. I just want to play this game. Get on with it. And it wouldn't quite do that, and that was very... That was kind of annoying, honestly. So I did what I could, and I enjoyed the gameplay that was there, but the, the, the added-on stuff was kind of annoying. And let's see now. Yeah. Uh, da -da. There's another shot of it, and uh, the uh, shooting game next to it is pretty cool, too. Uh, Mario Kart is an extremely fun game, very competitive, but is is also a very simple and easy game. So you jump in with a bunch of friends and it's a lot of fun, but you're more than likely going to win uh, whatever level you're playing just because they've got a very simple AI. The Luigi's Mansion off in the back is a really fun game. It's sort of a shooter and sort of not. And that's hard to describe, but if you play it, you, you'll understand. And this game right here, this is the, the prize area. You know, you're, you're trying for prizes. And you can figure out what each game is about pretty fast. And you'll notice, you know, just tons of bright, happy games. And they're, they're specifically very tall because they know that's going to be noticed more. So they're trying to get noticed a lot. And the piano game itself is a lot of fun. you got to hit each key at the right time and, and it sounds like you're playing music. So I actually played that and won 40 tickets and really enjoyed it. And I don't think... Oh! I made the high score. <laughs> Oops. And this is... I, I tried to get this shot with my other camera, but this is a uh, see-through glass type shot. And it's basically a Plinko machine, but... It is... You know, multiple layers of video there. So I wanted to show that. And... You know, just give you an idea of each area. And yes, that's that's a aiming game at a bear's mouth. Another Plinko game, Sonic the Hedgehog. Last ball. Oh, maybe more of a pachinko, I guess. And Jetpack Joyride was actually one of my favorite games for the uh, iPhone. So there you go, the prize area. And it was it was a lot of fun. Oh, ah. Uh... Do, do, do. Sorry. Um. Okay, where was I? 
Uh, there we are. And uh, this is a, a kind of a, this is the music area. And these were the games that people weren't noticing as much, so they moved it all to a different area so that people could notice it more and spend more time with it. It's right next to the driving area. So you got a lot of games. These are very complex games if you ever look at it. But they're very simple in, in demonstration, but can get complex in uh, design. And the same thing with these, uh, these rhythm games that were everywhere. And here's another uh, shot of various games. This is uh, Maximum Drive, whatever. And then there's Gunslinger Stratos. And I absolutely adored Gunslinger Stratos this time because I knew what I was doing and I knew how to how to race and I knew how to how to do stuff. So I was doing really really well and I was killing a lot of guys and I was maneuvering a lot better than before and I was like, wow, I've, I've really progressed in this game. I really know what I'm doing now. And Gunslinger Stratos has a community day on the second and fourth Sunday of the month. So if you're in the area, go play it. So then you can go against people around the world. Serious, that's that's a really cool thing. And you know, this is the, the shot of the, the machines again. And I played this game because somebody had left his car alone. And I was like, no, you gotta race this game. And the, the stick shift actually works, and it's a good idea to learn how to use it correctly. And it's basically this story element where you're just driving through traffic and racing other cars. And it's got kind of this, this driving vibe to it that other cars, that other games don't, because you really do feel like you're driving through traffic. And I really did kind of think of Seattle, you know, on a less trafficy day. And I just, I really enjoyed it. And, <laughs> uh... You know, I wanted to kind of shift down for turns, and it really didn't let me do that as much. So I'll have to look into that a little bit more. And you can tune your car uh, in that machine on the, the left so that you can get your car to be even cooler, and you can put in a little card for that. And I don't really know how to do any of that, honestly. And from there, I drove over to the GameStop and kind of took some pictures of stuff. And this is the first time I've seen the PlayStation machine working on a Nintendo Switch, a Nintendo console, anything not. And they also had a, a Vive. But here is a shot of GameStop. You'll notice that there are way more toys now. At one point, this was all games, but now it's almost entirely toys. And look, it's a bookstore. So it feels like Hastings, uh, right before they, they went under. And I'm sort of wondering, is, is GameStop and and uh, Barnes and & Noble and the other stores, are they following after Hastings? Because Hastings went under, and I really liked Hastings, so I don't want this to happen. And so I, I walked in, I checked out stuff, saw some games I would would like, but don't didn't know if I had the money. And this is the bookstore, and you'll notice that they have more stuff to sell that will, than books. In fact, there's a very large section of uh, board games to play. And they they did this, and I saw this, and I was like, oh, I kind of want to read this book, but I don't have a chance to, to buy it right now. And then I played the, the Vive, and it was actually a pretty boring game, if I were being honest. Uh, each one, I was supposed to do certain maneuvers, certain things, and Honestly, I, I didn't enjoy it as much as I should have. I mean, the, the 3D was cool, the maneuvering around was cool, but I just didn't feel like I was into the game. And that's that's a problem with VR is you really have to feel like you're in the game, and they just didn't sell that for me. I played a space game, and then I played a shooter game, and then I played a um, uh, the office simulator game. <laughs> I think the shooting game was the most fun because you could maneuver around and you, you could dodge uh, shots coming at you and you could literally move, move out of the way of the shots. And you could do that and then you could shoot the characters. And that was that was very, uh, very innovative. But I'll notice that everything is within kind of this area and you can't maneuver out of it because if you were, you would, you'd uh, pull out the wire. But also, it, it just... It feels very constricted and very uh, difficult to uh, maneuver with. 
And I saw this car and I was like, oh, I gotta take a picture of that. I mean, it's Japanese. And I guess I I took the Snoqualmie Pass, or actually, I tried to uh, to exit out, and then I realized I I took the wrong exit. I really needed to take the I-5 instead of the 405. And so I it took me forever to get back to the I-5. Every turn I took, took me back to the 405. I was just like, come on. And then we had a car wreck, so, you know, things slowed down. But eventually I got back to the I-5, and it was just smooth sailing from there. The entire trip over Snoqualmie Pass was simple. There was only a couple spots where I, I really slowed down because of wetness. And I, I actually wanted to pull over and stop and to take a picture of the frozen lake. If you know Snoqualmie Pass, you know the lake I'm talking about. And the, the, the island of trees that everybody thinks knows about. And that's that's really a, a, a shot I want to take over the years. And... I got to Ellensburg and I filled up and I found out they have interactive screens. And when you're not using them, they, they throw advertisements at you as you're pumping gas. So then you have something to watch. And I thought that was really cool. And I, I took another picture, I guess. And I had some Wendy's and this was probably the most food I've had all day. Um, I had McDonald's and that was, that was actually really good McDonald's food. Uh, the burger felt plentiful and juicy and you know tasted really good and the fries were good and I was going to order a shake but just didn't think I, I wanted that many calories and then I came to Wendy's and I bought this and I had some ketchup and uh, basically sat there going wow that was a lot easier than I thought it would be and the best part was my cruise control worked just fine and then slowly um after the gorge, it stopped working. And it didn't start working until I was past Moses Lake. Or not past Moses Lake, until I was near um, Chini. Uh, I don't know how to explain this. It just stopped working for a while and then it turned back on. And I don't know why. So I'm going to check the fuse boxes, the fuses. I don't know where they are. I, I don't know how to fix cars very well. I'm definitely a hit it with a hammer type guy. But I enjoyed my trip, and by the time I got home, my dog was super excited to see me. And she's doing a little dance in that picture, by the way. And I took her out like ten times, and she's still like, no, no, we gotta go out again, we gotta go out, go out again. I haven't seen you in, in forever. And so, you know, I had some time, and I talked to my folks, and uh, it was basically me just kind of trying to relax and take care of my day and write notes and I'm going to continue writing notes so the notes are going to be up on the blog pretty soon and I'm going to do a lot of stuff and I'm also going to make a uh, video on expectations versus you know things I learned and other stuff for the rest of this week and that's going to be the slideshow or that's going to be the lectures for this week and uh, that has been my trip to Emerald City Comic Con so thank you all for watching and enjoying these videos. Uh, I've been getting a couple comments. I've tried showing videos as much as I could. Uh, sometimes I just didn't have the chance. And there have been a lot of really cool things to check out. So I want you, all of you to know that I'm, I'm thankful for you for watching and that it was a really long trip. And I couldn't even show you a tenth of what I saw. But I, I hope I gave you a, a good experience, a good idea and hopefully, by June, I'll have the 360 camera up and running. I'm looking at a better camera. The one I used for Emerald City Comic Con just, just wasn't doing it. And I'm also going to get a better car, so then it, everything looks more stable and capable. And I'm going to decorate the car so that it looks like it's some kind of uh, cosplay thing. So then people won't feel offended by it. Uh, I actually had people go, oh, well, that's a cool idea, but, you know, it looks dangerous. And I was like, but there's other things like this. And they are like, yeah, but people are just going to say it looks dangerous. So if I cosplay it, they're going to think, oh, that's so cool.